Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about lies that your doctor has told you about the thyroid. This is not going to be an exhaustive or complete list. In fact, what I want you to do after watching this is leave a comment below about things that your doctor has told you so that I can make additional parts to this because I've read and uh, seen from dozens and dozens of thyroid patients different types of lies and things that just aren't true about the thyroid. So we're gonna be dispelling some of these myths um, and I've created this list just based off of um, some of the comments that I've heard from you from, from thyroid patients in the past. And in fact, what prompted this video uh, was a discussion I had with my wife wherein she was talking to one of her friends and her friend said something about her doctor said, oh, well, you can't increase your dose of thyroid medication too rapidly, otherwise, you know, X, Y, or Z would happen. And I was like, that is completely not true at all. So what I wanna do is I wanna talk about some of these lies so I have a little bit of a list here. So number one, the first thing that I hear all the time lately, in fact, this has been coming up more and more frequently, and that is biotin is somehow harmful for your thyroid and should be avoided. Now, there's some truth to this, and what you'll find is that there is some element of truth in some of these lies, um, but they're just taken out of proportion or taken out of hand and drawn to an incorrect conclusion. So in this case, is biotin harmful to your thyroid? No, not at all. In fact, biotin has no impact on thyroid function, but biotin does have some impact on your thyroid labs. So what can happen is that if you take biotin and then you get your thyroid labs tested, it can actually make those labs a little bit inaccurate. But no, it has no impact on thyroid function. All it's doing is interfering with the thyroid testing assay. Okay, so it's a completely different story if it's interfering with the test itself versus interfering with thyroid. And biotin does not interfere with your thyroid. Therefore, it does not need to be avoided, okay? In fact, if you just want to avoid having issues with the lab test, all you have to do is stop taking biotin two days before your lab test and the problem is solved, okay? You do not have to avoid biotin or supplements that contain biotin because you think it'll somehow interfere with your thyroid. That's come up a lot recently. I'm not sure why, I think there were some studies that came out so doctors maybe read those and completely misinterpreted them. Um, but anyway, that's number one. Number two is that the dose of natural desiccated thyroid fluctuates and is not consistent. This is something that your doctor will say if you ever ask to be switched to something like natural desiccated thyroid, uh, armor thyroid, na nature thyroid, MP thyroid, et cetera. A lot of these medications are on recall right now at the time of this filming, um, so they might even, not even be available as options. But in the future, when you try to switch to these, this is something that your doctor will say. They will say, there's no way that we can switch you from level thyroxine to armor thyroid, because if I do, then you're, the, the amount of medication or the dose in these medications is so inconsistent, it'll change your numbers, it'll fluctuate, and you'll never feel good, and yada, yada. Yada, yada. Now, this is not true at all. Um, it, well, th again, there's some element of truth here, and I'll explain that. But what ends up happening is that there is a wider range, or what's called a therapeutic index, that these medications can fall into and still be considered potent. That range is plus or minus 10% of the stated dose. That is different from the, from the therapeutic index found in level thyroxine and Synthroid, which can only be within plus or minus 5%. So it is true that there is a slightly wider range that your medication can fall into in order to be considered potent, but that dose is still within 10% plus or minus of the stated dose on the, on the packaging or on the bottle. So it still is quite effective. However, it can fluctuate somewhat, so it is important to note that that does exist and it can be a problem. In fact, this is the very source of the recalls that have happened recently. Many of these medications, including NP thyroid more recently, that just happened like last month, Nature Thyroid, WP thyroid, um, and then NP thyroid again last year, what they did is they fell outside of that 10% dose. So if your medication falls outside of the, the guidelines that are required of it, it will simply be recalled and it won't be available. So it's not like you can take something that's incredibly subpotent or incredibly super potent um, because in th those cases it could actually ca cause harm. And when they fall outside of those range, the FDA will pull it or require that they pull it. Usually it's voluntary, but if they don't get their act together, they will be pulled off the market. So you don't really have to worry about this necessarily, and it's not a good reason to say that you should avoid level thyroid, or I'm sorry, that you should avoid armor thyroid, NP thyroid, et cetera. Okay, so that's number two. Number three is that taking your thyroid out is an easy solution for fixing thyroid problems. Completely false, okay? If you are somebody um, who has your thyroid out, please leave a comment below, tell people about your experience, because that is not true at all. In fact, it is sold to thyroid patients um, that thyroidectomy or surgical removal of the thyroid gland, which is referred to as thyroidectomy, is somehow curative, okay? So this is often a recommended treatment if you have something like hyperthyroidism or thyroid cancer. Now, in the case of thyroid cancer, it can't be avoided. Um, usually you have to at least take out half of the thyroid gland, if not the full thyroid gland. So that case, um, you know, isn't necessarily a good case because it is required. But in most cases of hyperthyroidism or thyroid nodules, it is always preferable to do everything that you can to keep your thyroid gland in 
and not remove it unless absolutely necessary. The reason is simple. Once you remove your thyroid gland, you become dependent upon thyroid medication for the rest of your life. And it's not as easy as just taking a medication or taking a pill and calling it a day and saying that you feel better. Okay, it, does not, it doesn't quite work that way. From your doctor's perspective, it does. And so from their perspective, they'll think, hey, all I gotta do is if you get your thyroid removed, I'll give you a medication. I don't have to worry about tweaking your methimazole dose or you know, adjusting your anti-thyroid medications or worrying about you going to um, thyroid toxicosis or anything like that. So it's easier for them, but it is not easier for you once the thyroid has been removed. In fact, many people, once their thyroid become, is surgically removed or ablated, they deal with all sorts of issues, in, in, in including weight gain, um, fatigue, you know, and these can last indefinitely until they get their dose dialed in. So do not think that removing your thyroid is an easy solution to whatever thyroid problem you're currently facing. If it's required and you have to do it, that's a different story. But if there's any option available to you wherein you can try a natural therapy to avoid the surgical removal, you should try to do that. Okay, number four. Um, another one is supplements do not help your thyroid and can actually hurt your thyroid. I hear this all the time. In fact, because I, I provide thyroid supplements to patients, what they'll do is they'll, they'll purchase the supplement, then they'll take it to the doctor and they'll say, hey, can I use this? Is it okay if I use this? And the doctor will say, no, no, you can't use that. That's gonna, that's gonna hurt you. It's gonna damage your thyroid. It's gonna do all these things to your body. And that's just completely false. In fact, all of these supplements, have, which have been used by, in my case, 45,000 patients or more. Um, and by the way, there's other people that produce thyroid supplements as well. So we're talking hundreds of thousands of people who have used thyroid supplements, if not millions. I'm sure it's in the millions. Uh, but these people have all used thyroid supplements with great success. And in fact, what ends up happening is a lot of people who use thyroid supplements, they see a natural improvement in thyroid function, which allows them to reduce their thyroid dose. Now, for some reason, doctors don't like this, okay? If it wasn't their idea and they didn't, they weren't the ones that caused you to reduce your dose, they're gonna be upset about that, all right? It's silly, but this is just the way that it is. And also, a lot of these doctors who will say don't take supplements really don't even understand how supplements are working. In fact, I have a couple of tests that I use just to, that, that you can ask your doctor, a couple of questions that you can use to see if your doctor knows anything about supplements or vitamins or, nu or nutrients to begin with. One of those questions is, when was the last time your doctor checked your vitamin D level? Almost, you know, it's like one to two thirds of the entire population is vitamin D deficient. It's an incredibly important um, hormone for immune function and for depression and for a whole slew of other symptoms. And if your doctor hasn't checked your vitamin D level, which is one of the most common vitamin deficiencies worldwide, then that doctor clearly doesn't understand uh, how supplements and vitamins and nutrients are even working in your body. Another thing that you can do is ask them how to test for vitamin B deficiency. And if they say check your serum B12, you, can, you know that that doctor knows virtually nothing about supplements because the, that's not the best test to actually check for vitamin B12. And th these are just basic you know, uh, medical student one-on-one things. They learn these things in medical, medical school and they should remember these things. So if your doctor can't answer these questions correctly, um, then I, I don't know that it'd be a good idea to take the advice of somebody who really doesn't understand what they're recommending. But do not be confused. They will make recommendations and say that these things are harmful even though they don't understand why they are. They just don't want you to do it. Okay, so keep that in the back of your mind whenever you're using supplements. Number five, free T3 and free T4 lab tests are not important and don't need to be tested. This is another big deal uh, for patients because what they'll do is they'll, they'll see these videos and they'll go to my blog and they'll read these blog posts and they'll think, hey, wait a minute, the TSH is not all that great, right? We, we should be looking at our free thyroid hormone concentrations. And that's true, you should be. If you want to test and evaluate a hormone in your body, doesn't it make sense to look at the hormone levels of that, that hormone in your bloodstream, right? That's what we're doing by looking at free T3 and free T4. Now your doctors will say, no, you don't need to do that because the TSH is the best test. And that's just 100% false, okay? The TSH is a helpful test, but it is not the only test that you should use, nor is it the best test, okay? You're, when you look at a hormone, you want to look at how much hormone is in the blood of that particular hormone. So in the case of uh, uh, thyroid, we can look at free T3 and free T4. If we were going to measure your testosterone, does it make sense to order your testosterone, or does it make sense to look at the pituitary equivalent, which would be FSH and LH? If I said, let's check your estrogen and progesterone level, doesn't it make sense to order your estrogen and progesterone level instead of your FSH and your LH, which are pituitary equivalents to the TSH? It doesn't make any sense to order that component, which is coming from the brain. It makes sense to look directly at the hormone and the, ho the levels of that hormone in your blood. So do not fall for this, this gimmick that the TSH is the only test that you need to look at. It is an important test and it can give you helpful information, but it should never be looked at in isolation, nor should you base all treatment upon that one lab test. You're not going to end up well um, if you do that. That was number five. We're on number six now. Um, 
hold on one second, there we go, number six, once you start taking thyroid medication, you must take it for life. Okay, this is another thing that your doctor will tell you. Uh, they will tell you once you start thyroid medication, you're going to have to take it for the rest of your life. And this is not entirely true. Again, there might be some kernels of truth in some of these statements. Um, there are a lot of people who, once they do start taking thyroid medication, will need to be on it for the rest of their life. But there are many people who, if they address the underlying cause of their thyroid dysfunction, can get off of it at a later point in their life. Um, or they can try to get off of it and see how maybe they can lower their dose or maybe they can adjust it or do various other things. But if you can treat the underlying cause of your thyroid dysfunction, you'll go a long way to getting off of your thyroid medication or at least reducing that dose. In fact, we have tons of studies nowadays which are showing that a lot of people as they get older were unnecessarily unnecessarily kept on their thyroid medication um, and they don't need it anymore. So you have a lot of doctors, this, this is generally in the nursing home population, so it doesn't extrapolate well to probably the audience that is listening to this, but it does prove the point that a lot of people are taking thyroid medication unnecessarily. So what doctors have found is that some of these patients have just been on thyroid medication for 20 or 30 years. No one really knows why they started it and no one really knows why they keep doing it other than it's just they've been taking it forever. And so what these doctors have done is they, they slowly wean these patients off of the thyroid medication and they found out they do, they do better in some cases or they don't need it at all. So do not assume that just because you started thyroid medication that you must take it for the rest of your life. That is not necessarily true, although it can be, all right? Again, there are some kernels of truth to some of these statements, so I want you to be aware of that. Uh, but in some cases I've explained when they're you know, patently false. Now what I want you to do is please leave comments below. If a doctor has said something to you, especially an endocrinologist or another type of doctor, if they said something to you that doesn't sit right and you're like, I'm not sure if that's true, leave the comment below with the statement and I'll make a part two or a part three because I have a feeling we're gonna have a lot of different um, uh, falsities when it comes to the thyroid function, okay? And if you haven't already, make sure that you download my, three, my free thyroid PDF resources. I have tons of information all designed to help thyroid patients just like you uh, feel better. So. That's really what I'm doing here and that's really my goal. So make sure you download those free resources um, and you can see all of them below. Um, and if you have any questions, leave them below as well and I'll do my best to get back to you. And otherwise, that's all I have for you guys. So I'll see you in the next one.